Alright guys, Tantacrab here back again today, hopefully you enjoyed your day so far and today we are going to discuss the New York Subline is officially confirming the fourth player on their roster for the 2021 season. It has yet to be seen exactly what is happening with John, he was linked with this team but it has now been confirmed that Hydra is joining the New York Subliners for next season alongside Claystar, Mac and Zuma. The starting four is yet to be determined though so we'll have to consider that in the coming days and I believe John is still very certainly in discussions with this organisation. Whether it goes through though remains of course to be seen. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for doing that. Really helps out the channel. Just before we get into this roster mania stuff, I wanted to mention this really quick. Bonda Hart talking on a podcast yesterday that Ranked Play is coming. He doesn't say it explicitly and the audio is kind of messed up, but he basically says, has there ever been a Black Ops game without a hardcore competitive focus? And uh, well, no, there hasn't. And well, Ranked Play is certainly coming to the game. Maybe not at launch though. No details on that quite as of yet. This also came out from Fragments. Thanks for pointing this out to me. Missed who added me in this tweet. And as you can see, Shane Shane, Dylan Codd, Shawnee and Alex rumoured to be on the London Royal Ravens next season with the fourth potentially being zero. Shane of course here on the left is the coach of this team. Dylan Codd was on that team last season in addition to Shawnee who has now been confirmed and these guys have all teamed in the past on Unilad and Reciprocity as well. So interesting to see how this one develops and I wonder when London will end up confirming their roster especially because Subliners have gone out of their way to make a confirmation today as we will look at. Over the last couple of weeks we saw Accuracy, Temp, Sensor and Happy get released during the New York Subliners. Kind of as expected. Then we saw Attach get released as well, so accuracy and attachment onto the Minnesota Rocker alongside Major Maniac and Priester, as we looked at a couple of weeks ago. Then at Clayster was officially confirmed back on a well the 18th of September. This was rumored for a while. We weren't sure exactly what direction Clayster was going to go in. He officially does go back to the subliners, joining then Mac and Zuma, right? This certainly makes sense. Mac can play a flex, he can play an SMG. He was a fantastic player throughout the Modern Warfare season. Zuma, legendary duo with Clayster. Question really was like, why isn't Attach staying on this? team kind of makes sense for that to be the team four attach Zuma, Mac and Clayster kind of would make sense however attach decided maybe to go in a different direction and now we have a situation where Clayster is joining the subliners Zuma's there his old buddy I suppose is that main entry SMG Mac can either play an SMG or a flex and now they need a player who can also either play an SMG or a flex depending on the direction they want to go and today they just confirmed that Hydra is going to be that guy the French phenom comes to New York welcome Hydra to the Anbox official family so these are some highlights from his well previous games I suppose him doing a trick shot over at Infinite Warfare there was a clip from Modern Warfare there was a clip as well from Black Ops 3 as you'll see on screen here in just a second so yeah wow Hydra joining this team this is a well not a guy you might have heard a lot about right we talked about him probably a little bit over last season in the Challenger side definitely one of the most promising players in the Challengers region but to get yeah, a French talent that doesn't necessarily get too much exposure get too much love in the scene he wasn't on one of the best Challengers teams we'll have to look at exactly his run in a second here but the best team really was Team War Singularity early on team war for the majority of the season Hydra was on train hard but was still dropping absolute numbers right and was definitely one of the most promising talents in that region and it's understandable that teams wanted to pick him up and we discussed a while ago that well Paris were certainly looking into him they probably could have picked him up halfway through the season on the substitute bench and just loaned him back out to train hard I suppose to complete the rest of the amateur side or if they actually wanted to bring him into their starting lineup which they could have done his English has definitely come leaps and bounds in the last few months as we'll look at once again here in just a second so this is a very interesting move. As you can tell from these clips, this guy is very talented. He's considered one of the best amateur players in the entire world. Clayson did a tweet not too long ago saying the same thing and guess what has happened just a few weeks later? He gets confirmed onto New York. So really interesting. He says the following, very excited to announce that I'm joining Subline is proud to be part of such an amazing organization. So frankly, this is really cool to see. I'm very happy to see that, well, European talent and potentially Australian talent as well with Pred being in consideration for the Paris Legion roster are getting their opportunities abroad, right? Because it's pretty difficult difficult a lot of the times for European players to break out especially given that well the pandemic situation makes it more challenging to travel it's a lot easier for these organizations to pick up players that are homegrown and native to the US and are much easier to bring into the starting lineup for a number of reasons but there is so much talent in many different regions it's great to see Hydra and the French region getting their opportunity of course from the side of the uh, the Paris Legion it's not looking great now as up to Cod says head coach for the Paris Legion some absolute muppets floating about maybe well maybe regards to his own organization right 
because it doesn't really look like they've had the greatest run of things. The fact that Hydra has been unable to go to the New York subliners when, um, you know, no one was really talking about him until a month or so ago. And then, well, they didn't snap him up when they offered the opportunity to. It's just not a great look for the Paris Legion. If there's one guy you want to build your team around as kind of like a, you know, a main franchise player on your team that you could build around for years. And if he does end up becoming ridiculously good, sell for a very high price to another organization. That opportunity now has gone, of course, completely out the window. This then is Clayster's history with players like this. As we can see over the last few seasons, it may have been Clayster's thought process that, hey, in 2019, I played with Simp and Abizi on the, well, the United squad that won the Black Ops 4 World Championship. Abizi, you could argue, wasn't necessarily a rookie. People were saying how Mac isn't, like, technically a rookie. You know, I think you can have the discussion either way, because Abizi played in the World War II season on Enigma 6, so you could certainly argue he's not a rookie and it was only Simp who was a rookie, but, um, yeah, that's a discussion that you can certainly have in the comment section below. But Clayster may have been looking at these teams and thinking, look, I had Simp and Abizi that I kind of molded into fantastic players that they are today. I had Illy and Shotzi, and of course Hook, but, um, you know, lesser so, because Hook's been around so many years already, that I kind of molded into the players they became at the end of the season, or at least helped mold them with the help of Crimzix and the rest of the teammates and the coaching staff, of course, in Rambo Ray over at the Dallas Empire. And he may be looking at next season and thinking, okay, well, I'm now back to four versus four. I've got Zuma. I've got Mac as well to potentially develop as well. But, you know, do I want someone who I've, I've typically played with for a long time, or do I want someone who could potentially add a lot of firepower to the team? And also, I can help develop in a similar way. Like, I managed to manage to nurture these kind of players, like two of the players in previous seasons when I won the World Championship. Maybe I'll need some additional firepower in that sense. So, you know, the question is, is Mac and Hydra a potential rookie duo, I suppose, winning the 2021 World Championship? I wouldn't put it out of the question. As I say here, this is the number one team to watch for me. It's yet to be clear if Hydra will start. I believe, personally, he will at least get his opportunity to start at one point in the season. If they do end up signing John, and then, like, Hydra is, like, a substitute on the team or whatever at the start, and they do decide to start John, I imagine that at the middle of the season, end of the season, Hydra certainly is good enough to get his opportunity here, and I certainly hope it happens, and I hope that we can see what this guy is capable of, and it makes subliners not necessarily at the start of the season, but towards the end of the season, it makes them one of the scariest prospects in the entire game, in my opinion. Clayster is known to improve really throughout the year, or at least his teams tend to improve. We saw it with the Dallas Empire, we saw it with the United when they won the World Championship. I'm not expecting this team to come out of the gates. Let's say it is Hydra, Max Zuma, and Clayster to start the season, and John doesn't end up working out for whatever reason to get onto that team. I would not be surprised at all if this team, like, you know, top fours, top sixes, maybe for the first part of the season. But as the season ramps up, I imagine that Clayster gets this team in a great spot to potentially compete for the World Championship. There is a question about whether Mac is a rookie, right? He hasn't really played, well, he hasn't played a LAN event for a professional team, so I could argue that could make him a rookie to some degree. Then again, he did win an event this year on the New York Subliners. Yes, it was online. How much of this coming season is going to be online? You can definitely have the discussion either way. But I thought it was a fair, like, fair comparison to say Simba Dabizi, Illy Shotzi is close to looking at Mac and Hydra now that he's been forced off both of these teams for franchising and then the 4v4 change coming into effect to, um, well, get his revenge again, I suppose, on some of the organizations because as people say, when Clayster is dropped, that is a scary beast indeed to wrestle with. This then is Hydra's performances throughout the last couple of seasons. We can see back to the World War II days, Infinite Warfare, winning a lot of championships here, at least this is online stuff. A lot of first places we can see on Monaco Academy as well. You guys might remember this squad from the World War II days, winning a lot of this online stuff through to Black Ops 4 as well, a similar thing in the Modern Warfare season. His results actually don't look so good in comparison to some of the other seasons, but people certainly know how good this guy is. A lot of second places, which is impressive really given how competitive the European Challenger scene was last season. So I thought this was an insightful thread as well from Dereal. Proud of the player you are turning into. Thank you for the season we had and the very best of luck for your future in the CDL. It is a bright one. You went from the European Challengers to teaming with a world champion at Chips in your future. So Dereal was the head coach for Train Hard Esports last season. I care so much about my player success and I believed so much in the talent of this guy. In between all my studying and coach work, I committed to teaching Hydra English from scratch on my own accord to help the team overall from broken English to a chatterbox. Won't get the Paris Legion coach role, unfortunately, for the second year, but I'll take the positives that the two proposed Paris Legion rosters, which were happening earlier on, which have now been rejected, voted me as the choice of coach, but it's a minor setback. I'll continue to study and improve and bring something else to the table. In between all of that going on, I committed to my teams, did the usual analysis as well as live on the day from SNG versus War, like Singularity War, alongside my university work, figured out the smokes that can flip spawns and implemented it for certain hills, even if people outside can't see the value. There's no doubt that I work hard for all my guys. I succeed if they do. Learn so much from all the guys in my rosters this year and the challenges each team brought. You are not born a winner. You are taught the attributes 
to become one. Great thread from Drill. If you're a CDL organization, pick this guy up. So I'm very intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Would you have taken a chance on Hydra? What do you think about John? If John is an opportunity to be signed, would do you start Hydra? Do you start John? John's been out of the league for a couple of years now. Do you think that Hydra has more opportunity, more pedigree to be one of the best players in the world this coming season? And maybe John is somewhat past it in terms of his peak performance. We didn't see a great John in Black Ops 4, for example, you know, after he had to take this year out for reasons which currently have been undisclosed. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for making it this far. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps the YouTube algorithm know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well and push the Call of Duty community to new audiences. Thank you for watching as always, and I will see you next time.